Hey, what's up, guys? Nick Frosty here, and in this video, we're going to continue on with our member system. Now, in the previous videos, we have completed the login and log out part portion of the member system, and obviously, the next part would be the registration. So, I already have the register page created. It's just an empty file uh, with our title being set. You can see it right here. So, pretty much, we're just going to go ahead and get started with coding. So, with our register page, our file, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to have a PHP code block, and inside said code block, we are going to display our login form, or sorry, the register form, and then we're going to have uh, an if statement to check for the button, and then grab all that information, put it in the database, and, and, and all that good stuff. So, let's go ahead and get started. So, we're going to put in our PHP code block, and do note that I am inside of our body tags here, because that's where your main site content is, and I'm going to create a form variable, and essentially, this is just going to make it so uh, we can display our register form in different places, and make it very easy to display it, and update it, and all that good stuff. So, we're going to have a form tag in here with an action of something and we're also going to have a method of post so then we have to have our end form tag and then we're going to space this out a little bit we're going to put in a table and the reason we're going to put in a table is just to make everything look nice on the page itself <coughs> so we have a single row here and then two columns in the row so our first row is going to essentially have our text, or sorry, the first column will have the text, say username, password, email, whatever. And then the next one will actually have the form element, like input type equals text, name equals email, and then all that stuff. So before we do that, we have to set our action. Now our action is going to be period slash register. So essentially, that's just meaning that we want to go to our register page. Alright, so if we go ahead and look back at our database here, you can see that we have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 fields in here in our database table, and we have to be able to get the username, password, and email. And because this is just a simple proof of concept, really, um, for a member system, so we only have a few field values that we need to create. So we need to create username, password, and email. So let's go ahead and do username, colon, and what I'm going to do, actually, no, never mind. So in here, we have to put in our input, type equals text, name equals, and this will be user, the value will be uh, get user and the reason I'm saying that and setting a value of get user is because once the user themselves have clicked the register button and they go to register then we want to <clears throat> we want to display our form and say they entered in their password and then their confirm password was wrong uh, or they entered an invalid email, then we want to go ahead and fill in that part of the form again so they don't have to re-enter it. Obviously, we won't refill in the form for the password, but for the username and email, you might want to go ahead and do that. Alright, so we have that. I'm also going to set a style, and I'm going to set this to... Actually, no, I'm not going to set a style. So, if we go ahead and refresh the member page here, you see we have an undefined variable of get user um, and that is because we need to put in our code to get rid of undefined variables and it's right there put this above in our register page very top here put in our PHP code block and put that in right there so if we refresh the page we have nothing so what we're gonna do just to show that our form is there we're gonna put in a simple echo and echo out our form so we have our basic form <coughs> created right there. So now we're just going to fill in our form with the rest of our elements. So we have a password, or actually we're going to do email first. 
we have email. Our name is going to be email. The value is going to be get email. And then after that, we're going to have a password. Our type is going to be password. Our name is going to be pass. And our value is going to be nothing. Then after that, we want to have a retype password. I'm just going to make it say retype. Our type will be password. Our name will be retype pass. Our value will be nothing. And then last but not least, this is probably one of the most important parts, is we have to have our submit button. And I'm going to name it register button. Or more specifically, register btn. Our value will be register. So we go ahead and refresh the page now. You can see that we have our form filled out here partially and we have it created. So notice that the email and password are already filled in as my login info and that's because I'm using Google Chrome's um, save feature. Okay, I'm using Google Chrome's save feature so it will auto fill in but by default it won't fill it in for you unless you have the auto save. So, <clears throat> go ahead and get rid of this and we're going to put in our if statement down here and we are going to actually this needs to be above our form variable and then we're going to echo the form so um, also what I want to point out is there are multiple ways of doing error detection and prevention with PHP and displaying those errors to the user uh, but generally when I make a website I simple with uh, forms especially I simply create a new table element right here so we are our new uh, row element and then inside of here I will put a variable that I will set above so say error MSG short for error message so then we would have our if statement up here that would check for our register button, so dollar sign underscore post, and then standard brackets, and inside we have our register btn. So this is checking to see if we have our register button through our post method, and our method on our form is post. So if we don't have a register button, it's not going to do anything, it's just going to pretty much show the form. Uh, but if we do have it, then we want to run all the code that's in here, which will allow us to check for the existence existence of each element and each uh, value from it and then making sure the passwords are correct making sure a valid email has been entered and stuff like that so uh, we need to first get all that information so we want to say get user equals dollar sign underscore post and inside of here is user so when we use the dollar sign underscore post method uh, for getting uh, <clears throat> variables and data. Uh, since our method is post, we use dollar sign underscore post, and then our name is user for the field. We just set user. It's pretty simple. Uh, we're also going to need email, so that will be get email. We will need get pass and uh, get retype pass. Inside of here is pass, and this is retype pass. Make sure it's spelled right. Yep. All right. So now we've gotten all of our information. What we need to do now is we need to make sure that it's there. So in order to register with our simple member system, you have to enter your username, your email, your password, and your retype password. Now say you have a bio or an avatar that your user that maybe your users can select or enter in. And you don't want that to be necessarily required because then it's it's less likely that people will use it and then it just gets annoying really. So instead of requiring all that stuff, we're just going to put in if statements to make it so only certain things are required. So the first thing we want to check for is our get user. So if our username is entered, and obviously that's a must because that's what they log in with. So yeah. Um, our else is going to set our error msg message and this will be you must enter your username to register uh, yeah 
And I'm also going to come down here where we have our error message created. I'm going to set a font and a color. And I'm going to set the color to red. So it's just going to give us, um, every time we have an error message there, it's just going to show it as red. So, yeah. So, so yeah. After when we have our get user uh, found, we next want to check for our email, our get email. So we'll say get email and else error msg equals and you must enter your email to register. So it's pretty much just the same message over and over, um, just changing it slightly to fit the field that uh, must be entered, I guess, is the best way to say it. So after that, we need to check for our password and our retype password. So, go ahead and do that. So, if get pass, else you must enter your password, there's no I in password, uh, to register. Go ahead and just copy that, save a little bit of time. And this is our get retype pass. And instead, we're going to say you must retype your password to register. So after we check for all of the things that the field that the uh, register form requires, what we need, what we want to do then is we want to make sure the passwords, the retype, and the normal password are exactly the same, or else um, obviously they didn't type it in right. So you don't want to register them because then they'll like forget their password and it'll just be a pain. So we're going to go ahead and just set our message to your passwords did not match. Alright, so to be able to check that, to check to see if two strings in PHP are exactly the same, you want to set one string, so we have our get pass, and normally when you compare strings, you just do equals equals, and then get retype pass. Now, this will work, sort of, but not fully. So, just having two equal signs here, and yes, it is two, um, it essentially means if our get pass is similar to our get retype pass. So, it doesn't check to make sure capitalization is correct or anything like that. It will check to see that the same characters are in the same order. So, we want to make it so our capitalization is exactly correct. So, you want to put in three equal signs. And that will check to make sure that the strings are exactly the same, caps included. Obviously, that's a must. Uh, so after we check for our password, we want to make sure that a valid email address has been entered. And that's because we're sending an email activation for the user in order, to be able, in order for them to be able to log in. So we have our error message. Um, So you must enter a valid email address to register. So there's a couple of aspects that a valid email address will have. Um, one, it will have to be above five characters long because you have to have the period, the at sign, you have to have the domain extension, which at the very least will be two letters. So that's four letters right there. And then <clears throat> you have to have the domain itself, for example, Nick Frosty and then .com would be the domain extension and then you would have to have the recipient the the name itself so admin at nickfrosty.com so you have admin as the per the name itself then you have at and then you have the domain of Nick Frosty and then you have dot and then com which is the domain extension so we have to check for all of those and if they aren't all found then a valid email address hasn't been entered don't forget to check out my website, follow me on Twitter, and subscribe on YouTube.